Hello and welcome to Supposedly Fun. My name is Greg. I am here today because basically every June I prioritize LGBTQ books, authors, stories in my reading and this year is no different. However, I had already developed my TBR for the month of June uh, in the middle of May because I get excited about these things. Given events that have happened recently with uh, the murder of George Floyd and the protests that have come up all over the world, I decided to throw out the TBR that I had already created and come up with a new one because I still want to explore LGBTQ stories and voices in the month of June, but I've decided to create a TBR for the month that emphasizes black voices and black stories uh, that also happen to be queer. So. I'm here today to talk about that TBR. But I also want to say, obviously, every, we all need to do our part to enact change in this country. I think change is something that has been a long time coming, perhaps too, far, too long coming, and we all need to do our part, especially if, like me, you are also white. You know, we, and obviously posting on social media and having conversations about black stories like what I'm doing right here, um, it matters as does lifting black voices, which historically don't get the respect or the access that white voices do. The intention of this video is to help with that, but I encourage you to think about next steps as well and additional actionable items that would help make a difference, especially in your area. You know, with the pandemic and everything going on, I. I I understand getting out into the streets and protesting is not necessarily an option with all of the danger that is out there. I understand that that's, that's also not necessarily an option. I live in an area where there have been protests, but they've been very small because my state is largely white. <laughs> um, so I, I just encourage you to help find ways to be involved and do things that matter as well. One thing you can do is contact your legislators. I use a service called ResistBot that makes it really easy. I'll uh, try to find information about it online and link it down below. Basically, you just text the service and it will help you craft a letter that will be sent by them, not by you, to your state representatives. It makes it really easy. I use it all the time uh, because it, may, it does make it so easy to contact your legislators and let you, them know what you want them to do because ostensibly they work for you. You can donate to organizations. Uh, there are, of course, organizations that support uh, black rights. You can donate to uh, provide bail money for people who are arrested as part of these protests. I was only able to make a small kind of token donation this month so far. I'm hoping that by th at the end of the month, uh, I will be able to do more once we have figured out paying, you know, paying bills and things like that. But it's something that we can do. I will put some links to places you can donate down below. I also encourage you to check out Eight Can't Wait. This is a new initiative that outlines eight policies that would decrease police violence by 72%. You can get to know those policies and learn about how to take action for your state in the link down below in the description box. So I'll put a lot of things down there. I don't quite know exactly what all of them will be right now, but I will put things that you can follow and do more down below. So please take a little time and check that out. Now let's get to the black voices and stories that are part of my TBR for Pride Month. And another reason I, I, I particularly want to focus on Pride reading and, you know, I have my Stonewall Riots t-shirt on and I have my Pride stash on my face is that Pride celebrations are being canceled uh, in a lot of areas. They have been in Montana as well. So I think finding ways to show your pride in other way, outside of a celebration are going to be really important this year. So <laughs> with that said, let's get to the TBR. Now this is not actually something that is on my TBR. I read it last year, but I want to kind of recommend it. Uh, once again, it is the Stonewall Reader. It is edited and compiled by the New York Public Library. Last year was the 50th anniversary of the Stonewall Riots. So this book, the, well, the reason I am recommending this is that th this book has a really broad representation of LGBTQ stories in it. It covers uh, a variety of races, genders, sexual identities, uh, gender identities, and 
even people who are more fluid. And it tells the story of um, Marsha P. Johnson. And I, there are a lot of stories in here that I would encourage you to get to know, to understand the broad range of the LGBTQ spectrum. And I think if you are just getting started on that journey, this is a really good primer because um, what it compiles interviews and essays and uh, excerpts from larger pieces of writing to give you a really good snapshot of the history of these type uh, these groups and how they were being treated and where they fit into the larger gay rights movement and give you an idea of where they went over time. I would absolutely recommend it. If you need, if you want something that's kind of like an easy introduction, you really can't go wrong with the Stonewall Reader. So again, that's not actually part of my TBR, but I want to make sure I take the time to recommend it to you. So something I am definitely going to read this month for sure, because I, I have a, couple, a bunch of different books <laughs> uh, on this list. I don't know if I'll get to all of them, but this one is definitely going to happen because it is a buddy read that I am doing with Lindsay from Lindsay's Book Life. It's Girl, Woman, Other by Bernardine Evaristo. I'm finally going to get around to it. So odds are you're already familiar with this book because I've talked about it a fair amount and how much I want to read it. It, it was uh, the co-winner of the Booker Prize last year and it immediately jumped out to me when it was named to the long list, long before it made the short list and eventually co-won the prize itself. So this book takes, I believe it's 12 stories of black women in the UK, including some queer stories, and puts them together sort of like a quilt to talk about the experience of being black and female in the UK. And I am just so eager to, eager to get to this book. I'm really looking forward to it. We are starting this book this weekend and I, and it should be done by the end of the month. Really looking forward to it. And uh, one thing I also want to do as part of my uh, Pride Month TBR featuring black voices and black stories uh, is to try to cover the male and female experience. I think that is going to be important as well. And I'm going to try to get some modern stories, some a little, some older stories as well. And I think this is one of the books that is going to be key to helping get that well-rounded sense of everything. So that's Girl, Woman, Other. This one I have actually already started. It's How We Fight for Our Lives, uh, a memoir by Saeed Jones. I am actually listening to the audio of this book, but I have an advanced reader's copy of it, thanks to, thanks to Matthew Sharapa, who sent it to me last year. And I think this book pretty well encapsulates the purpose of my Pride Month TBR and its emphasis on black voices and black stories, because this is about his life growing up black in America and his life growing up black and gay in America. In one of the first chapters, uh, which I thought was very poignant, he is in, I think, junior high, and he's watching the news, and the story of Matthew Shepard comes on. And he has already seen stories about black people being killed by police uh, or just killed in racist violence. So he's already aware of the fact that he can be killed for being black. But seeing Matthew Shepard makes him realize just as he is figuring out his sexual identity, that he can also be killed for being gay, which I think is very profound, very poignant, and it's about his coming of age and his coming out, and I am halfway through. I, I think this is easily going to be one of my favorite reads of the year. It's really good. I absolutely recommend it. Saeed Jones reads the audiobook, and I think he does a really great job, as a lot, many authors do when they read their book themselves, and I, it's nice to hear it in his own voice, but if you only have access to the book, I recommend it. Uh, like I said, I'm only halfway through, but it's very good so far, and it's very honest, which is really refreshing, even about things that would, could potentially be embarrassing. So check that one out. Now, I don't think we can talk about the black gay experience, especially in America, without talking about the godfather of all of those things, James Baldwin. Now, one thing, because money is tight these days, I um, am really focusing on books that I already had access to, either through the Scribd app or the Libby app, or just books that were on my shelf. So. I kind of limited it to things that I can grab myself without making purchases. However, I am going to try to make an exception for James Baldwin because I only own two books by him 
and I've read both of them. I own Giovanni's Room and I own If Beale Street Could Talk. If I can't get a new book by him because uh, his books are not available on Scribd or Libby and my library is still largely closed. I think they will do curbside pickup, but I, I don't, you can't return the books yet. And I don't feel 100% comfortable doing that anyway. So if I'm able to get a new book by him, I'm probably going to pick up either The Fire, the Fire Next Time or uh, Go Tell It on the Mountain. The Fire Next Time is specifically about the black experience in, in America and Go Tell It on the Mountain is, I believe, an autobiographical, semi-autobiographical novel about his life. So I'm going to try to pick up one or one of those instead. If I can't, I'll probably end up rereading Giovanni's Room. But I think he is the prime example of an author who embodies the kind of mode or feeling of what I want to do with my pride reading in the month of June. So that's James Baldwin. A modern book. This one was released this year. Um, I believe it was released just before the pandemic really hit, but the pandemic definitely hit its author tour and its release schedule. So I, I would recommend supporting this book if you can. It is Real Life by Brandon Taylor. Let's do the blurb on this one. Almost everything about Wallace is at odds with the Midwestern University town where he is working uneasily toward a biochem degree. An introverted young man from Alabama, black and queer, he has left behind his family without escaping the long shadows of his childhood. For reasons of self-preservation, Wallace has enforced a wary distance even within his own circle of friends, some dating each other, some dating women, some feigning straightness. But over the course of a late summer weekend, a series of confrontations with colleagues and an unexpected encounter with an ostensibly straight, white classmate conspired to fracture his defenses while exposing long hidden currents of hostility and desire within their community. Real life is a novel of profound and lacerating power, a story that asks if it's ever really possible to overcome our private wounds and at what cost. I've been looking forward to reading this book since I first heard about it and I think this initiative that I'm doing this month is the perfect time to do that. So, and, and like I said, I, this is a new book. Um, it's author tour and it's uh, press as it was released were interrupted by the pandemic. So I would recommend supporting this author if you can. I haven't read it, but I, everything I've heard about it online so far has been positive. Then last year I discovered a series of books called the Little Sisters Classics. Uh, which is published by Arsenal Pulp Press. Basically, the idea is that they take books um, that were either very popular or were seen as classics in their time about the LGBTQ experience, but were in danger of being forgotten and were out of print, and they tried to bring them back. So one of, I ordered a bunch of them last year. One of those is Blackbird by Larry Duplichan, and which was apparently adapted into a feature film starring Monique. So let's do the blurb on this. First published in 1986, Blackbird is a funny, moving, coming-of-age novel about growing up black and gay in Southern California. The lead character, Johnny Ray Rousseau, is a high school student upset over losing the lead role in the, a school staging of Romeo and Juliet. As if that weren't enough, his best friend has been badly beaten by his father and his girlfriend is pressuring him to have sex for the first time. All the while, he's intrigued by Marshall McNeil, whom he meets at an audition and is surely the sexiest man to walk God's green earth, at least according to Johnny Ray. This novel of adolescent awakening is as fresh and heartfelt as it was when it first published. Uh, and of course, all of the Little Sister books have supplemental material. This one is no exception. It has, uh, I believe, some reviews from the time and interviews about the book that were, uh, from the time when it was published in 1986. So this one is particularly interesting because it's sort of the classic gay coming of age story, but from the perspective of a black man, and it was published in 1986. So I, this is one that I am probably going to try to prioritize and really try to get in because I think that sounds fascinating. And this is a book that was on my TBR for Pride last year and I didn't get to it. It's The Women of Brewster Place by Gloria Naylor. Now, I had known about this book for a long time, but did not realize that it had an LGBTQ angle until earlier last year. And I didn't have time to read it in June last year, so I want to try to get to it this year. So, in her heralded first novel, Gloria Naylor weaves together the stories of seven women living in Brewster Place, a bleak inner city sanctuary creating a powerful, moving portrait of the strengths, struggles, and hopes of black women in America. 
Vulnerable and resilient, open-handed and open-hearted, these women forge their lives in a place that in turn threatens and protects, a common prison and a shared home. Naylor renders both loving and painful human experiences with a simple eloquence and uncommon intuition. Her remarkable sense of community and history makes The Women of Brewster Place a contemporary classic and a touching and unforgettable novel. I believe at least one of those seven stories that is woven together uh, has queer angle to it. So I, this, like I said, I really want to have like a well-rounded idea of the LGBTQ stories of color in America. Girl, Woman, Woman, Other is UK. This is kind of like the American version of that, published, I believe, in 1982. This won the National Book Award for Fiction in 1983, so it's been around for a while, uh, and I would definitely like to get to it. Another book that was on my TBR for Pride Month last year that I didn't get to uh, was Speak No e Evil by Uzadin Ma'awela, and I didn't get, I had backburnered this one, even though it was on my TBR, because my reading goal last year was specifically to expand out, I, I read a lot of LGBTQ books, but mostly that uh, focus on the G, gay stories. Um, so I really wanted to read more books last year that had lesbian, bisexual, transgender questioning representation. So I prioritized some books last year that featured those, which meant that this one ended up on the back burner. However, it's perfect for what I want to do in my Pride Month reading this year. On the surface, Nero leads a charmed life. Raised by two attentive parents in Washington, D.C., he's a top student and a track star at his prestigious private high school, bound for Harvard in the fall. But Nero has a painful secret. He is gay, an abominable sin to his conservative Nigerian parents. No one knows except Meredith, his best friend, the daughter of a prominent Washington insider, and the one person who seems not to judge him. When Nero's father accidentally discovers an incriminating text on his phone, the fallout is brutal and swift. Coping with troubles of her own, however, Meredith finds that she has little left emotionally to offer him. As the two friends struggle to reconcile their desires against the expectations and institutions that seek to define them, they find themselves speeding toward a future more violent and senseless than they can imagine. Neither will escape unscathed. Very much looking forward to this one, and it's, it's, a, it's a slim volume, so hopefully there will be plenty of time to get this one in. And the last black author, black story that I am going to put on my TBR for the month of June in my Pride Month is An Untamed State by Roxane Gay. Roxane Gay is, I believe, bisexual. I've only read one book of hers before. It was a nonfiction book called Hunger. I think her perspective and her world experience is very different from mine, which is why it's important for me to read authors like her. Uh, this one is a novel. From what I've heard, it is a very good, well-written novel, but has a difficult subject matter. So that, the difficult subject matter is why I have kind of held off on reading it, but I feel like this month uh, it, it, it aligns with everything I'm trying to do right now. Morel Duval Jameson is living a fairy tale. The strong-willed youngest daughter of one of Haiti's richest sons, she has an adoring husband, a precocious infant son, by all appearances a perfect life. The fairy tale ends one day when Morel is kidnapped in broad daylight by a gang of heavily armed men in front of her father's Port-au-Prince estate. Held captive by a man who calls himself the commander, Morel waits for her father to pay her ransom. As her father's standoff with the kidnappers stretches out into days, Morel must endure the torments of a man who resents everything she represents. So the novel itself does not necessarily have queer representation, but it comes from Roxanne Gay, who is part of the community, so I... That, that's why it's on here. Uh, I will say, I think I would probably prioritize this one lower than a lot of the other ones on the TBR. However, Roxanne Gay is an author I definitely want to read more of, and this is something that I have on my shelf, readily accessible, so I will be looking forward to getting to it. Um, I will also add two things. One, an LGBTQ book I had already started in the month of May. It's a buddy read with Sean the Book Maniac. I will be finishing it. So I'm going to put it in here as a sort of PS to my Pride Month TBR because it was already ongoing. It doesn't fit the brief for the rest of the month. Um, but like I said, it was something that was meant to lead into Pride Month. So it, it, the circumstances led the rest of the uh, Pride Month reading to diverge from it. It's My Father and Myself by J.R. Ackerley. This is a memoir. J.R. Ackerley was a gay man in the 1920s. 
Uh, and this memoir is about his experience with his father, as you can tell from the title, and try to, trying to reconcile their relationship to each other and how they felt about each other. Uh, we are halfway through at this point, and it is very good so far. And finally, in my Pride Month TBR, I have a book that does not fit the brief for what I want to do for the rest of the month, but I am still going to try to prioritize it and get it in. It's a, it's a novel by Larry Kramer. Um, I don't know if I can say the title of it in a video because the title of it is a gay slur. And the cover of the book has a, had like side male nudity, so I'm kind of debating if I can even show you that. Um, but it is something I'm going to try to get in, even though it doesn't fit the brief of everything else I'm doing, because Larry Kramer passed away, and if you don't know who he is, he is a legendary activist in the gay community, especially in the era of the AIDS epidemic. Um, he had a reputation for being angry and a little di and difficult, but he got a lot of things done, and in, especially in retrospect, when you look back, you see that he was kind of the voice that was needed at that time, and he always had a reputation for being difficult afterwards um, and being contentious. But what's interesting as well is when you look at him, you see the way anger about the way gay people were treated shaped him into something like that. So it, Susan Sontag said, Larry Kramer is one of America's most valuable troublemakers. I hope he never lowers his voice. So in a way of honoring him as after his death, I wanted to make sure I get this book in and I'm going to I'm gonna do a little research and see if I can maybe at least show you the cover of the book on uh, YouTube. I don't wanna flout the rules, but just know that there is a book, novel by Larry Kramer that I have a copy of and the title is A Gay Slur and I am going to be trying to get it in even though it doesn't really fit with the rest of the brief for the month of June and my TBR. So, there you have it. Obviously I'm not gonna be getting to all of these or I probably won't be getting to all of these in the month of June, that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight books with a ninth that doesn't really fit the brief and a tenth that was already going and doesn't fit the brief but is still gonna be in. So that's a lot of reading for the month of June. I'm really looking forward to getting to Girl Woman Other finally. I'm really looking forward to finishing How We Fight For Our Lives and seeing which other ones I can get in. Some of these are also have audios available on Scribd. Uh, Speak No Evil for sure. I can't remember which other ones. So if you have recommendations for books other than this, like I said, I really tried to pick books that I already have access to and are already in my library. Um, but if you have other recommendations, please be sure to drop them in the comments down below. And I would love to hear what you are reading if you're uh, going to be reading for Pride Month, even if it doesn't have the same focus as my reading for the month. I would love to hear what you're doing to celebrate Pride Month since celebrations themselves are likely not going to be happening. And I hope you're doing well, I hope you're staying safe, and I hope you are living your life proud, whatever that form may be. So thank you for the time watching this video. As always, I really, really appreciate it, and I will be back. Until then, happy reading.